Hey there, Roamers. Welcome to the Roam in Your Home podcast and YouTube channel, where we get to hear from full-time RVers, unpack their experiences, and learn actionable advice to help you roam in your home too. I'm your host, Jamie Williams. Thank you so much for being here. Buckle up, my friend. Let's get ready to go on an adventure together right now. Well, hey, friends. Welcome back to the podcast. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you so much to all the amazing listeners that come back each week to listen. It truly means a lot to me. And if you missed any episodes, you'll find them all on your favorite podcast platform, or you can listen on our website at roaminyourhome.com slash podcast. And for anyone listening for the first time, I'm Jamie from Rome in Your Home, and my husband Randy and I have been full-time RVers since 2017, and you can go back to episode 12 to hear our story. And the goal of this podcast is to give people a glimpse of RV life and hear from real full-time RVers that are living the dream. Will you pull back the curtain and ask all the questions and get all the answers of what we wish we knew before we started full-time RVing? My goal is to share these real life conversations with you each week so that you can get the information that you need to be able to roam in your home too. Today, you are going to love my conversation with Jason and Jen from No Sticks, No Bricks. They're both retired veterans with 45 combined years of service. That is so impressive. I loved hearing their amazing love story of meeting in the military and how many RVs they've had over the years. I was shocked at the number, and I think you'll be too. They have tons of experience to share, and I learned so much from them. If you follow them, you know they are hilarious. And if you don't follow them, go after this episode and follow. You won't regret it. You will love this episode of part one of their conversation, and be sure to come back next week for part two. You won't want to miss it. So I won't make you wait any longer. Please help me give a warm welcome to Jason and Jen. Hi, Jason and Jen. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having us. We sure appreciate it. Oh, I'm so glad that you're here. I have been really looking forward to this all day because you guys are so much fun on Instagram. I can always count on you for my daily laugh. So I know this is going to be a good conversation. Laughter really is the best medicine. We truly believe that. (laughs) It sure is. And you guys are so good at it. Oh my gosh. Every time I see your posts, I'm cracking up. They're so good. (laughs) Well, we appreciate that. I just uh, subscribed to your YouTube, too. I didn't even know that you had a YouTube, so I'm excited to dive into your videos, too. I'm sure they're awesome, too. Yeah, we uh, that's probably our main platform. We we have a lot of fun creating videos and editing videos and being silly, you know, and just it's a good time. Oh, that's so good. I just discovered our road less traveled and I saw that you guys just made a video with them. So that's cool. We did. Yeah, we did. (laughs) That one was hard to make because we were laughing so hard. It was so hard to film and edit because it was just laughter, laughter, laughter. But it was a blast. We love those guys. They're they're good friends of ours. Oh, good. I can't wait to watch it. I just found it today. And I'm like, oh, I can't wait to watch it. So that's good. Well, I can't wait to learn more about you and share all your experiences with our listeners. I want to find out how long have you guys been on the road? We actually hit three years this month and about another week or so. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. Yeah, we've been full timing almost three years. But now we've been RVing together for over 25 years we're currently on our seventh rv in the last 25 plus years so oh my gosh you said seven yeah this is number seven (laughs) Oh my gosh, that is incredible. Oh, I can't wait to hear all about what they are and what you have now. First, I want to find out who is in the RV with you. So it's me and Jen and our three dogs. That's what I wanted to talk about. So I saw you have a yellow lab. Yep, the big baby Axel. Yeah. Oh, we have a yellow lab too. Oh, that's so awesome. And then what are your other dogs? Uh, We got a Dotson and then we got like a little mutt. She's a Yorkie Pum. Remy and Pug mix. Oh my gosh, what a great combo. 6.9 pounds of fury, that's what we call her. <laughs> oh, how fun. I'm 
such a dog lover. So that's awesome. Are your dogs in your YouTube videos? Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Axel especially, because if we're filming outside, he usually spends his time outside. Because as you know, at Yellow Lab, they like to leave their yellow locks of love all over the RV. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> he spends a lot of time outside. Yes, our dog's name's Cooper. And I always joke around, I can't believe he still has hair. He should be bald by now. Because he sheds another Cooper every day. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> I don't either. It's unbelievable. And so tell me, what made you guys decide to do this full-time RV life? So we're both retired Air Force. We retired from active duty in 2014. Well, first of all, thank you both for your service. I think that is amazing. Yes, ma'am. Our pleasure. And thank you. So at any rate, we, we retired from active duty in 2014 out of Germany. We were stationed in Germany at the time. And we moved back to Alaska. And we had been planning the retirement. So we had already purchased property. So we built this extravagant house on 10 acres and a lake. And I mean, it was just an amazing piece of property. And our kids were still fairly young at the time. So then we worked in the civilian sector while our kids went to the same schools for another seven years. And then they both grew up and graduated and left. And here we are now with our big old house and property and no more kids in it. And the only reason to work was to keep the house because the house payment was so high. So it was either that or sell everything, retire at 48 years old and live off our military retirement check. So that's what we did. Oh, that's so smart. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's nice being young and retired at the same time. It allows us to do a lot more on the road. Oh, absolutely. Oh, that's so awesome. I was just reading about your service and combined 45 years of service, right? That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so impressive. Yeah, it went by fast, though, believe it or not. It seems like we were just in. Wow. Now, did you guys meet prior to serving or did you guys meet in the military? We met in the military. We met in Alaska at a party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like 50 below zero, you know. Yeah. You got to get close and comfortable when it's that cold. Yeah. So. <laughs> a friend of mine liked one of his roommates and so that's, she was going over there and that's where we met. Yeah. The rest is oh history. Oh my gosh. What an awesome love story. That's so great. And so how long ago was that? Oh, that was in 1997, the very beginning of 1997. So yeah, it's been a a minute. We just went on our, we just celebrated our 25th year anniversary by going on our first cruise ever. So that was pretty cool. Oh, that's wonderful. 25 years. That's a big milestone. That's so great. Yeah. So I want to talk about your current RV. And if you guys wouldn't mind sharing some of your past RVs, I'd love to hear all about it. Absolutely. So currently we're living in a 2021 Grand Design Momentum 397 toy hauler because we ha- it's a fifth wheel. It's 44 foot long. Uh, we have a Harley that we put in the back of the garage. The last 12 foot of it is garage. And nice. then um, we also have, we tow it with a F450 and then Jennifer drives a Jeep behind me on travel days. So we come into RV parks pretty strong. Yeah. <laughs> we get a lot oh, of that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we think we have too much stuff, so. (laughs) Yeah, but yeah, this is actually our second toy hauler. The RV before this that we had up in Alaska was a a Raptor. We had a Raptor toy hauler. But our our first RV is really kind of what set the things in motion. We, like most people, started camping by tent camping. You know, that's what we did. Tent camping, and then we decided, you know what? It's time to get an RV. So we bought a 1968 truck camper. It was eight foot long <laughs> and it had an ice box in it. It didn't even have a refrigerator. And wow. so we were in Alaska we would have to buy blocks of ice for the weekends. Of course we were weekend warriors back then because we were working. Um, but you know, it was Alaska. So you buy a block of ice in June and it's good till like September. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And then we had another truck camper after that, a little bit bigger one. And then since then, it's been all fifth wheels. So yeah, number seven. Oh my gosh. And so when you guys started with the truck camper, what made you guys decide to do that? Just to have, you know, some things to do on the weekends and be able to go and spend some time outdoors? Or did you know anybody who had something like that? And um, Yeah, some of our friends it. had campers at the time. We were really big into snowmobiling at the time and four-wheeling. So most of the time on weekends, it was, you know, go out camping, go four-wheeling, go snowmobiling, whatever the case may be. And then um, we were doing a lot of tent camping doing that. But then Jennifer got pregnant yeah. with our daughter and it was, she wasn't going to be sleeping on the ground anymore. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> so that kind of pushed us to the to the camper, and then we were like, "Well, we kind of this is kind of nice." <laughs> so oh. <laughs> we haven't looked back since. Oh, that's so good that you guys really started out, you know, with the tent and knowing that you love to be outdoors, and then. Yes, when you get all of the comforts of a RV, it definitely changes things. So that's so cool. And then when you guys started thinking about selling the home and doing the full-time RV thing, did you look for a new RV or did you already have a fifth wheel at that time? So we already had the Raptor at that time. Um, oh, had, okay. We actually prepped for almost three years. Like, So our daughter graduated high school, left for college, and our son was not graduating for about two years later. So that really started getting the wheels turning when she graduated and we knew that, you know, his graduation was coming up in a couple of years. So we just started prepping then. And okay. um, we were, our Raptor was a 2009. So it was a little bit older. It didn't have quite all the creature comforts that the newer RVs do. So we knew that we were going to get something new. So yeah, we started watching YouTube videos and watching all the, the full timers that were put pumping videos out and um, basically came across changing lanes. And that's kind of how we came upon the momentum at the time. Yes, I'm familiar with them too. And so do you have the same floor plan? Yeah, well, not anymore. So Chad and Tara, they had a 397 and now they've got the 410, the one that they helped design for Grand Design. But I totally um, forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, at right? the time they did. Yeah, it was the 397. And then um, Jarhead and Gender from Jarhead and Gender's Journey had a 397. So we used to watch their videos. So now we're all friends. Like we've met all these people on the road since we left. It's pretty cool when you watch people's videos and then like a year later, you actually meet up and become friends with them. So that's pretty cool. Oh, that's, that's so awesome. And I love that you already knew like from seeing their videos that you really loved the floor plan. And then when you actually decided to get your momentum, did you go and like order it or were you able to walk through it before you bought it? Well, so we were in Alaska and so there wasn't really any of them up there that we um, could go walk through. But I was visiting a friend of mine in Missouri and there was a dealership that had one. So I went and was able to actually walk through it and, and look at it. And so then um, once I knew everything and took video for Jason and pictures and we decided that we were going to shop around and find if he gave us the best deal because we didn't buy it in Alaska. We bought it in the lower 48. Yeah, we, we had the luxury of knowing that we were going to be driving down to the lower 48 from Alaska to pick up our new RV. So we could basically shop anywhere in the country. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's awesome. Because our plan was to sell the Raptor in Alaska and then just put everything in a U-Haul and tow it down and pick up our new RV. And that's exactly what we did. So it was it was that's how we got the best deal, basically. Oh, that's so nice to have the luxury of shopping around. And Jen, when you actually went in and saw the RV for the first time, I know you guys were familiar with the YouTube, but was it exactly what you thought walking in or was it different seeing it in person? I mean, I thought it was different. We had really never had like a new rig. Mm -mm. Just, just We've always bought, you know, used or whatever. So it was different. It was nice to put your hands on things to see actually how much space it was. So it was a lot bigger than what it was in the video. Oh, good. A lot taller. A lot taller. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what, when we picked it up, the day we picked it up, up, I was like, holy cow, this thing is tall. I just wasn't <laughs> expecting it to be that tall. It's so much taller than a Raptor. Oh, good to know. And, you know, because we weren't sure. I mean, you know, we're ordering it and we're not there to, to actually look at it every day or get updates or go through one together. But I liked it. And so we were pretty sold on it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so good. Because, yeah, when we were looking at our first fifth wheel, we were looking again on YouTube and we saw so many floor plans following people that, you know, we absolutely loved the floor plan on YouTube. But then when we walked in, inside we were like oh we don't like it at all I mean it wasn't even anything like we thought and so kind of ironically the one that we were like eh, this is kind of okay on the list we walked in we're like this is it this is awesome so it was definitely different seeing in person but I'm so glad that you actually got to see it before you bought it and you obviously loved it so yeah, oh yeah and uh, we actually had like a, an excel spreadsheet of like our top 10 RVs that we had it narrowed down yeah. to with like all the nice. pros and cons right. and, and then um um, finally, originally we were going to go with the DRV actually. Then we ended up flipping over to the momentum. You sound just like me. I had the same exact thing, the pros and cons and the wish list. And I was comparing them all and didn't want to you know, make a mistake. And Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Cause we had like and the so, must haves compared to like, yes. you know, the wants, like what are the things we must have compared right. to what we want? So yeah. And the momentum, exactly. they've, they've got like the biggest tank size out of all the different fifth wheels that we looked at. And we, and we like to boondock a lot. When we lived in 
Alaska, we never stayed at RV parks. We always boondocked everywhere we, we went. We did stay. Barely stayed in RV parks. But so, you know, the tank size for gray water, black water, that was important to us, fresh water. So, yeah, and these ones got huge, huge tanks. Oh, good. I didn't even know that. That's a good thing to, to think about when shopping for an RV for sure. And so, what are some things now that you are so familiar with all the different RVs and the, your past experience and the, the Raptor compared to the Momentum? What are three things that you absolutely love about this RV that you definitely want if you were going to upgrade to a different RV? That you would want to have in the next one the three things that we love one is the we opted for the full body paint nice so we didn't have to deal with like the fading stickers and all that yeah so that was kind of like a must-have for us at the time having two bathrooms was also an option it was a must-have actually not an option but a must-have two full bathrooms two full we actually baths, have two yeah. full bath two showers oh everywhere. wow yeah. you have too full. That's so nice. Yeah. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit, but we at the time we thought that we needed that. Right. That's it, changed a little yeah. bit. And then um, we obviously, it was the toy hauler. Yes. had to bring the motorcycle with us. So those were the three Definitely. things. Oh, those are three big things. Absolutely. And then now that you've been in it too, are there things that you dislike about it that you wish you could change or maybe don't like as much as you thought you would? Yeah. Um, the bathroom being one, it's nice to have two toilets, but as far as the shower goes, all we use that for space for is hanging extra clothes in i like it's so small that when i tried to shower in it the curtain just stuck to me <laughs> oh, yeah. that's no fun yeah, yeah. so i uh, our son actually traveled with us for about i don't know eight months or so yeah. when we first hit the road and he would use that shower back there but we have not used that shower since so we uh probably would change that again and then and then the other thing with two bathrooms that's two bathrooms to clean instead of one yeah true you know, so yeah <laughs> and then do you have two gray tanks and two black tanks then or does it all combine to one two different ones okay and then another thing that you know we were like super excited to have like the sliding doors and the patio which now we never use never use the sliding doors are a piece of junk in our opinion like they fall apart the screws come out it's just right and we're talking about the the sliding doors that go out to the toy hauler patio yeah, part the toy hauler, yeah so so what do you use then so we, we usually just stay outside or the only time we really use our patio is if we're backed up to like water like the ocean or a lake or a river <laughs> Otherwise, the dogs use it. The dogs use it. All dogs the time. love it. Yeah, because they can be on the patio and they don't have to be tied out. You know, we can put their bed out there, their water, and they're kind of free to come in and out as they want. So they love it, and that's pretty much even what the garage is for. It's that whole twelve foot of space is nothing but for the three dogs. Yeah. Oh, that's so nice because I always. Every time I see a toy hauler with that rear patio, it's like, oh, I think I would be out there all the time. That's what we thought. And then, yeah. but typically, you know, as a full timer, your, your view is a camper that's next to you. Yeah. So when you're sitting out right. there, you're just staring at the next camper. Um, and that's, we just rarely use it unless we're like, like I said, I, against water. Or I something. think we've only used it to sit out maybe two or three times. And that was, yeah, backed up to either a river or yeah. our pond or something. Other than that, we don't ever sit out there. And so because you said you have it down for the dogs and stuff, I was curious, do you find that you always have room? like a site that will allow you to put that down? I'd say 80% of the time. Mm -hmm. We do run in and run to some RV parks that the sites are just too small for us to put the patio down, but we're planners. So when I'm booking my reservations, you know, months out, I am picking sites on purpose that are going to be long enough mm -hmm. for us to fit in and have the patio door. Because the, the good thing about the patio door is it allows a lot of airflow through the RV. Mm -hmm. You've got that big open space. The patio doors are closed, but they all each have their own windows. So you get airflow coming through. When that big door is up, you can really tell a difference inside without that airflow. Oh, nice. Okay, good. That's the one thing I'm not familiar with is the toy hauler. And every time you know we go to RV shows and look at it, because we have a motorcycle too, and we actually drive separate and I tow the motorcycle cycle and so we always think wouldn't it be so nice to have you know the fifth wheel toy hauler that we can bring it with us and i love the garage and the patio and that's awesome but it's good to talk to actually somebody you're the first person that has had a toy hauler so it's good to kind of pick your brains about it for sure and so what are three of your favorite rv accessories or must-haves i love that you have so much experience and i'm sure that you know your favorites have changed over the years but what currently are some things that you would recommend people get when they're thinking about doing this rv life well for us because the way our 
RV is designed, there's not a lot of entertainment space because just the way it's set up. So we, we bought a clam and we love that and that becomes our entertainment space. So. so tell me about that. So the clam is like an outdoor tent entertainment space. It's hard to explain, but it pops up basically and then it's a 12 and a half by 12 and a half foot tent. So here we are in our big 44 fifth windows. <laughs> we spent all our time in a tent still. But you know, we put the picnic table in the middle and then we can set up tables we actually have a ceiling fan in it and we can set the TV up in there our mini fridge wow. can go in there yes. and then we will entertain in there and that's where we'll have people over to play cards play Mexican drain which we're like totally addicted to right now and or like when you know we have a lot of potlucks we've been traveling with a lot of friends so it provides us a space if there's crappy weather or to avoid the bugs because you're inside that instead of sitting outside yeah like Jen said that since we we do have a 44 foot toy hauler but since it is a toy hauler and we don't utilize the garage space like entertainment space we really live in like 32 feet of space right because the last 12 foot is garage and it's just for the dogs basically we don't have anything set up in there to entertain in because then because we haul the bike back there so then we'd have to take it all out every travel day find a place for it so yeah not a lot of people do buy toy haulers without toys and then they turn that space into living space so but we just can't do that since we do have a motorcycle right oh that clam sounds like an ideal situation though to give outdoor space because a lot of people you know just same thing either they don't have the toy hauler at all so they don't have that extra entertaining space or it's bad weather they can't be outside underneath their awning you know maybe they have to put it in because of the wind or the rain or whatever so how does that do for the wind and the rain is it it does pretty, pretty good, good we'll, we'll take it down if it's going to be like really nasty out but it stakes all down and it does pretty good all the sides zip up zip down we also utilize it as a garage for our e-bikes so we don't have to have our nice. bikes inside all the time so that's nice and um we love that thing. We have entertained a lot in that clam. We have. Oh, good. The thing with the clam is we got like the biggest one possible. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, there's different sizes. There's different sizes. But, you know, the downside is like currently where we're at is you can't have anything on the grass. And our site's not big enough for the clam to be on. So. No. But, but we're not here with friends right now anyway, so we wouldn't have a really a need to entertain anyway so yeah. so is that something that when you call and book ahead do you ask about stuff like that or just kind of see what happens when you get there oh, we haven't had the clam very long to be honest with you we just got it in december I think. yeah so oh, okay no we i haven't even really factored that into booking but i may have to <laughs> yeah because yeah, it sounds like it's awesome i would definitely want to be using that all the time too pretty awesome we've done some videos on it and um we did a couple facebook videos on it and they got like three hundred thousand views because People are like, what is that thing? <laughs> so, but you see a lot of them in parks nowadays. If you uh, pay attention, you'll you'll see them pop up around RVs. Oh, good, awesome. And then, so what are some other things that you guys love? Oh, uh, well, our power system that we have for RV, uh, we really love. So we've got 900 watts of solar, and then we've got a 3,000 watt inverter and four lithium batteries. That allows nice. us to do a little bit more boondocking, harvest hose, stuff like that. So, and we added that after the fact. So that's definitely one of our probably favorite accessories that we have. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And so how long have you guys stayed out boondocking? We actually, the long, longest we've done was a month on Key West. We just did that in February. Yep. The entire month of oh February, we were at uh, a Navy base on Key West called Sigsby. And, oh, um, wow. Yep. Just dry camp for a whole month. It was yep. great. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we definitely need to get some solar and some more lithium. That's great. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it makes it nice. Especially for harvest hosts and stuff like that, um, you know, you, you still just, life goes on as normal, you know, you still watch TV at night, you do whatever you want and don't have to worry about it. It's, it's pretty good. Oh, great. And so is there another RV must have? For us, it was the sunscreens or the sunshades, depending on whatever you want to call them, because we have three awnings. And so they attach to the awnings and when you have them staked down and all attached, it kind of provides like more privacy and then the sun's not just beaming, you know, through the windows on the RV because we have full body paint, but it's black and gray. So it's a hot box. It is a hot box. Yeah, I'm so glad that you mentioned the full body paint too, because when we were looking for RVs, you know, we started in 2017 was our first, we bought a Jayco Pinnacle 40 foot fifth wheel, and we knew nothing about RVing. That was our very first RV, never knew about full body paint until it started oxidizing. <laughs> and then we're like, why isn't this shiny? You know, it looks so shiny when we first picked it up. And yeah, so never again will we have a 
RV that is not full body paint because that makes a huge difference and they look so much nicer. Oh, they definitely do. Yep, for sure. You know, the only thing for people to remember is it does add weight. Yeah, it does add oh. a little bit of weight and the cost is usually pretty significant. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. I think it's, well, the ones that we're looking at now, I think it's about 15000 more, but you get what you pay for, I think. It looks so nice and The resale much, value will be much better, that's for sure. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. But you're right with the attracting the sun. If it's black, you got to think about something like that, too. Yeah, I think if we had to do it over again, we would have got a lighter colored okay. full body paint, for sure. Yeah, that's something to think about. I'm glad you guys brought that up. And so now that you guys are on the road for three years... What has been easier than you thought about doing this RV life full time? Well, you know, we were planning during COVID. So that's when we were in our planning stages. And if, like I mentioned before, we're watching all the videos of YouTubers and everybody's complaining of how hard it was to get into RV parks. As you, I'm sure you're aware, COVID really sparked an RV revolution. Yeah. I mean, it just right. blew up. <laughs> So that was our biggest fear is, oh my gosh, we're going to finally hit the road and we're not going to be able to get in any parks. And we have not had that problem at all. We rarely have any issues getting to parks. If we do, it's because it's the Florida Keys in the wintertime or something like that, where it's like high use because of the time of year or weather or whatever. But other than that, we really haven't had any issues. Yeah, that's what we heard too. So we were RVing, like I said, in 2017 prior to COVID. And then we were actually in Florida, just going to be there for for a couple months and then we were going to hit the road we were doing travel therapy at the time and we were supposed to leave in march of 2020 to hit the road and go on our next contract to california well obviously everything was put on hold the country shut down but then everybody started rving and that was the biggest talk was nobody can get any reservations anymore and we're like what are we gonna do how are we ever gonna travel again and it was the biggest fear and so far every single rver that i've talked to has never had an issue so i wonder if it was just a lot of i don't know talk and yeah and i think a lot of it was covid really flared up over the winter when most full-time rvers are all concentrated in one area whether it be florida or arizona or southern california and texas and, you know in the summertime then we all just kind of spread out everywhere so that's true that probably exactly what happened then and then has there been anything more difficult than you thought it would be since you've been doing the full-time RV life. <laughs> yeah, so there's things that you don't realize until it happens, right? So healthcare is very difficult. You know, we're both retired, um, but our son is still underneath our plan in Alaska. So like our primary healthcare would be considered up in Alaska. Well, we're nowhere near there. So, I mean, like we can go to the emergency room and stuff, but like if you would need a referral for something, you know, you would, I'd have to call back to my PCM, who I haven't seen in the three years since we've been gone. <laughs> And probably right. even four years because I worked in a doctor's office, so I wouldn't have needed to go for any reason. But um, that is one. And then since we're both veterans, they have a traveling veteran program. The VA does. The VA does. Yeah. But, and, and that's a struggle, too. You know, it's kind of the same thing. You know, our VA currently is in Florida. But mm -hmm. before that, mine was in Arizona. So, like, you have to get a hold of them and tell them that you need something. Well, if you're only someplace for three weeks, it takes a month to get a referral. So that's the thing. I mean, it's a challenge. And we've been able to overcome it for the most part, but right. it's definitely a challenge. Probably definitely. our biggest challenge. Not only just for us, but our dogs. But for the dogs. Yeah. Right. They all take Same special thing. beds and food. And... That just happened like today. We were at a military treatment vet. We found one and we got all three in today. So we're good for a year. Oh, good. Isn't that such a relief? It's like a big weight off your shoulders. Because that's the same thing here. We're in Ohio. This isn't our regular vet. And he's ready for his annual. And I'm like, oh, do I do this? now now that i'm not existing customer or you know patient then are they even going to be able to get us in and oh yeah it's so stressful when you're traveling but for the va i'm so glad you guys brought that up because i wasn't aware of that so my husband and i are in healthcare too does va do virtual appointments at all or no um some of them so a lot during covid they did obviously but now the way it works so like we had our in-person visits this year because you got to be seen by them at least once a year to get all your refills. They give you like a whole year's worth. So every 90 days you can get okay. your refills. But you're required to see them, you know, in person, they say, once a year. Well, they allow in person one year, telemed the next, and then back to in person. So, yeah, so basically every other year. So every other year. So but they are starting to really scale back on that. Now that we're getting further and further away from COVID, mm -hmm. it's getting less and less accepted, I guess. I was medical, so I 
I get it. Like a lot of healthcare plans don't cover telemedicine. You know, they prefer for whatever reason they want people to be seen in person. But but we haven't had really any problems with it. No, like I said, we've always been able to overcome it. It's just a challenge. Yep. Right. And then what determines you were saying like your VA it was in Florida and then I think Jen you said yours is Arizona. Like what determines that? So initially both of our VAs were out of Alaska. So when she says our VA, she means our primary care our manager primary care within the VA within system. The VAs, yeah. So as veterans in the VA system, we can go anywhere. <laughs> So, okay, that's what I thought. I was wondering about that. Okay. Yeah, so, but our primary care manager has to be a specific doctor in a specific location. Like ours is in Florida right now. If I need something, then I just have to reach out to them and say, hey, I'm going to be in Arizona at this address for these dates. I need an MRI for this. And then they have to okay. put a referral in and have it sent there. It's a process. Okay, so they can't do a referral. Like if you were in Nevada, they can't do a referral for your face to face one year required no and that's the other thing yeah so you gotta your face-to-face your annual exam has to be with that primary care manager you know we kind of found out that the hard way because that's exactly what happened first year on the road you know i was seen and you know in alaska then we left and i had a telemed one and then i went to like schedule it and they were like oh no we need to see you in person and i was like well i'm in florida (laughs) (laughs) so um they're like all right we're gonna give you one more refill of your meds but you need to transfer to florida Florida, and so they put the referral in, and then... Um, and we knew that we were going to spend the next couple winters in Florida, so that's why we switched it to yeah. Florida, so... That way we didn't have to worry about it for mm-hmm. two or three years. Oh, good. Yeah, as long as you can plan it, then you got plenty of time to plan that. But I'm glad you guys brought that up because I was not aware that that happened like that, that they required you to actually see your primary. Everything has to be pretty much routed through your primary care manager within the VA system. And and then the other problem is it depends on your rating. So Jason's rating is high enough where he can go to another VA very easily, like to a VA emergency room or something. I have a lower rating and I could not. So So she she can only go for the certain items. For certain items, you know, so... Um, <laughs> we could have so like a four hour conversation know, on the like, VA system. We're going to go down a rabbit hole <laughs> right. on that one. Right. And I'm so interested in this part of it. And I'm sure the other RVers aren't, but this is so cool to me. I will say if anybody that's a veteran that's out there listening to this right now and they've got questions, have them hit us up and we would be happy to yes. answer any kind of questions that they have. I love that. I'm so glad you guys said that. That's so nice of you because I'm sure there are. Yeah. And the best way to get a hold of us is through Instagram message or Facebook message through our No Sticks, No Bricks pages. Perfect. I love that. And so you said you like to boondock mostly. And then how do you find your boondocking spots? Like, do you use a certain app? So I'm the planner. I'm the one that plans all of our different places that we go or where we stay, I should say. I use Campendium a lot. Yeah, I love that. familiar with that app. And then the dirt. Yes. I've used that quite a few times. Now, being east of the Mississippi, it's a, a lot more difficult to boondock. So we haven't boondocked yes. much. We pretty much stay within the Thousand Trail systems or military fam camps when we're east of the Mississippi. But when we get out west and you get really do a lot of boondocking you know i'll use campendium or or the dirt or something like that nice and then you mentioned harvest host you guys do that during travel days a lot yeah so um we you know being retired we we're just not in a hurry anymore so we never travel over 300 miles or if it's any longer than 300 miles then we're going to split it up with the harvest host and that's how we do it oh that's so great and we've we've stayed at some amazing harvest Mm -hmm. hosts from llama farms to lavender farms to wineries to breweries to oh my gosh all kinds of crazy stuff so it's pretty cool oh that's cool what's been your favorite at Harvest House so far? Ooh, um, I think, the you know what's funny is it's probably the very first one we went to, which was called Tuscany Winery, and it's in Effingham, Illinois, and we're actually going to stay there again here in a couple months, and um, just a beautiful spot overlooking a, like a field, and their wine was really good, and then you could walk to a Harley dealership, so <laughs> it was just, oh, a, it was just a really, really nice Harvest Host, but there's a ton of nice ones out there. We had a, the lavender farm that we were at in Washington was was really nice too. Never been
been to a lavender farm before, so that was pretty cool. And then we stayed at another winery, the one that had the concert. Oh, that's right. What was that called? Summer Crush Vineyard in Florida is another amazing oh, yeah. one. Uh, we have a video out on that. Our friends Harold and Cindy from One Strange Adventure did, it, I think, a whole video on Summer Crush. And yeah, that's a heck of They actually have hookups there, and you can get 50 amp, 30 amp. Of course, you got to pay for those, but you can boondog. They had concert there while we were there. It was great. Yep. That's so cool. One time we stayed at John Schneider Studio from Dukes of Hazzard. I have heard of that. It was so much fun. Oh my goodness. We were the only ones there. It was a hundred acres. We had the place to ourselves. We did not see a soul. Like we actually paid for full hookups and we just did it like through PayPal, I think. They gave us a code to get in the gate wow. and no one was allowed. It was so much fun. We got to walk in different buildings and it was really fun. Yeah, so definitely need to look that one up. I think it was Holden, I think is the city in Louisiana, but it was really fun. Highly recommend that. That was a blast. Huge Dukes of Hazard fan right here. So yeah, I would love to go see that one. Oh, you got to check it out. It's so cool. I think they have eight spots with full hookups too. Wow, that's cool. So you can go with your friends. I remember seeing pictures on like on Instagram of it and it looked like it was pretty awesome. Yeah, that was super fun. And then when you guys plan, so since Jason, you do kind of the planning. Yeah. When you were saying that you drive about, you know, 300 miles a day, is that what you were saying? Yeah, no more than 300. Typically less than okay. that. It's usually between two and 300 miles. Mm-hmm. So. Good. And then how often do you guys like to travel? Like, do you like to stay somewhere for at least a week or just depends on where you're going? It kind of depends on the year, to be honest with you. And during the winter, when we're just kind of hunkered down in Florida or Arizona, we'll, we'll stay a little bit longer, maybe three weeks at the most three weeks. Cause that's our thousand trails membership is three weeks. Um, okay. but when we're kind of moving around in the summertime, it's usually two weeks, maybe 10 days. Yeah. And we start getting a little antsy. Depends on how much there is to explore in that area. Once we kind of get the lay of the land, then we're ready to move on to something different. Oh, that's so good. That sounds like the dream. That is what we want to do is be able to be in more control of our travel. So that's awesome. And how many states have you guys been in so far? Um, it would probably be easier to say how many we haven't. So kind of our rule of thumb is we have we have a map, like a lot of people do, that we mark off. But our map is only for this RV only. Oh, so wow. So just in this RV, I think we've got, what, maybe five states left? Yeah, like five to seven, I think. Because, you know, the New That's... England states are all kind of cramped up there together. It's less than ten. I have yeah. to go look Oh, at my map. gosh. Just with this RV in just the Just with this RV. Years? We've hit all four corners of the U.S., continental U.S., and then a lot of it in between. That's kind of what we're working on now. Like, we haven't hit up, like, Kansas, uh, Oklahoma, Arkansas. We haven't camped in any of them yet. We just got Kentucky, though. We have, but not in this RV. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you guys think you've been to all 50, like, total with different RVs and stuff? West Virginia is on the list that we've never camped in. I know that for sure. Vermont we've never camped in. No, we've been there, but we didn't camp. Yeah, it's, it's, God, boy, I'd have to wow. really sit down and look, but we were, we're getting pretty thin. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. And the sad part wow. is we, we want to go back because we haven't seen everything. Yeah. Like, you, there's so much to see in this country. Oh, I know. And that's the best part, though, that you guys have already been to places that you can repeat. That's what we're so worried about. We have so many more things that we want to see, like, for the first time, but there's so many places that we want to see again. It's like, we don't have time for everything, but... Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's just, it's a lot. It's what takes a few years. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And so what has been your top five favorite locations, if you can narrow it down? And I know it changes as you keep traveling and stuff, but if you could tell us what has been your top five favorite. You'll have to come back next week to hear their top five favorites. You won't want to miss part two of this great conversation. Like I said earlier, if you follow them, you know they are hilarious. And if you don't follow them, be sure to go right now and follow them on Instagram and subscribe to their YouTube channel. They are so much fun and you will love getting to know them better. I know I have. You will find all the links of what we discussed and their social media in our show notes and on our website at roaminyourhome.com slash no sticks, no bricks. Be sure to come back next week for part two, then continue to come back each week because I have so many fun interviews coming up. You won't want to miss these great conversations filled with so many awesome tips and travel information. 
I learned so much and I know you will too. So come back each week. Thanks so much for listening. And I hope to see you on the road. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Rome in Your Home podcast and YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this episode, we'd love it if you would subscribe to our show and consider giving us a five-star review. It's free and would mean the world to us and help us grow. If you know anyone who would also enjoy this podcast, please share it with a friend. I would also love to connect with you on Instagram or Facebook at Rome in Your Home. Come back next week for another fun adventure. But until then, stay safe and we hope to see you on the road.